Hi everyone, my name is George Krajewski. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'd like to share with you how I failed my way to success in sales. I grew up in South Central Massachusetts, came from a really poor family. My dad was an alcoholic and my mom was a devout Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I never went to college. I attended missionary training school instead. Well, that was back in the early 80s. But I wanted to spend my life making a difference in other people's lives and in service to God. Although I've had no formal schooling since that time, my love for books and for learning in general has enabled me to become fully self-educated. In addition, I've participated in thousands of hours of seminars, lectures, and other training while attending Automobile University. Now that's a phrase coined, I think, by Zig Ziglar to describe the many hours a person can utilize for personal growth and gain specialized knowledge by listening to audiobooks while commuting to and from work. Well, my sales career began with a series of successive failures at various commission-only sales jobs. Now, these included stints selling vacuum cleaners door-to-door, -door, replacement windows, frozen food, fundraising, and even pest control. These, at best, saw me making 25 grand a year. Hard to raise a family of five, at, even at that time, on 25 grand a year. Little did I know, though, that the dues I was paying then, the persistent effort, and the belief that I would succeed someday were about to catapult me forward farther and faster than I ever thought possible. Now, I say the jobs were failures, but these were failures only in a financial sense. Sales were few and far between in those days, and at that time in my life, I just didn't have the money or the know-how to support myself and my family while learning a new business and being paid strictly on commission. I had always held to the belief that someday I would succeed, but with seemingly no end in sight to all of my failures, you know, I was beginning to lose faith in that hope. My thoughts seemed to be just a continuous recounting of my history of mistakes. I slowly began to give in to what seemed to be the obvious reality of my situation. I was a failure. Then one day, I picked up a little book, started reading, and it changed my life. The book was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The author claimed that all riches began in the form of thought. He argued pretty persuasively that thoughts were the only assets I had that were completely under my control. And then he cited example after example of successful people who overcame adversity and achieved extraordinary greatness simply by taking control of their own thoughts. I say that the book changed my life that day, not because it changed the circumstances I had created for myself. I was still broke between jobs, actually unemployed. I still had no idea how I would ever get out of the mess I was in. No, my life was changed not because my situation had suddenly changed, but because I had begun to change my thinking. I now knew that although I had failed many times, I was not a failure. Although I had made many poor choices, I could begin making better choices. My self-pity was replaced by a deep sense of responsibility to improve my life and the lives of my family. I realized this was not outside of my control because I could control my thinking. I immediately set out to develop a plan of action. Now my plan centered on finding a very good sales job in what was at that time a very tight job market. I recognized that the market might present an opportunity for me because it was hard for employers to attract and retain qualified people at that time. I decided to market my skills and my work ethic toward attaining the first legitimate sales opportunity I could find. I was determined to make up for whatever I lacked in education and experience in corporate business-to-business -business sales with hard work and perseverance. Soon after, a placement agency I was working with told me about an opening in the telesales department at Newcourt Financial, an equipment leasing company about an hour from where I lived. Now, despite my weak resume, the department manager had agreed to give me a telephone interview. The agent shared with me that this manager had interviewed 27 candidates already without hiring a single one of them. He told me I should call the manager and leave him a voicemail message. If he liked my message, he would call me back to schedule the telephone interview. If that went well, we would then schedule a face-to-face -face interview. Well, because I was determined to have this position, 
I decided to leave nothing to chance. Before calling, I sat down and I planned out the call, taking care to write out exactly what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. I then picked up the phone and left my message for the manager. Within five minutes, he had called me back. He said he was very impressed by the message I had left for him. He wanted to speak with me in detail and asked me to come in for a personal interview. Well, I got the job and with persistent effort, finally came to success. The next step up was at Monster.com, an internet company that was changing the way people found a job. I wanted to be a part of their culture and their success and I was ready to be the difference maker I always believed I could be, given the right opportunity. And I was ready to make some big money. In December 2001, I closed a sale over the telephone for $308,000. At the time, it was the largest single sale in Monster Telesales history. The sale allowed me to surpass my income goals for the year and made me the number one sales rep in my region at Monster for 2001. My drive, persistence, and a commitment to helping my clients see what was possible, instead of looking at the obstacles, had me consistently producing large sales and smashing quota. In September of 2002, I rewrote the rules for what was possible to sell over the telephone when I closed a deal for almost $1 million. <laughs> Just like Roger Bannister, who shattered the paradigm that said the human body couldn't run the mile in less than four minutes, then saw more than 30 other people go out and run a sub four minute mile within a year after he broke the barrier. So too, after I began closing these large sales, other people on the sales floor began closing them too. I finished the year as the number one inside salesperson in the entire company at monster.com. Once again, I blew away my personal income goals through persistence, determination, and a belief that I could change my destiny and the destiny of my family simply by changing my thoughts. I went from making $25,000 a year to making $250,000 a year. As my friend and mentor, Dr. Dennis Deaton of Cuma Learning Systems always says, we alter our destinies by altering our thoughts. Thank you 